Today, we're gonna to be learning a ton of little secrets, little tips for animating and making art in Fusion while we make this super wholesome log cabin animation. Ah, oh, this is chock full of good stuff. I know you're gonna love it. Let's jump in. All right, we're starting out in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna go up to Workspace and close our Show Page Navigation to give us a little more room. I'm also gonna start with a background node. Just drag that in, take the output, and plug that into our media out. That's gonna give us a black screen, and we're gonna kind of mock this up a little bit. The background is going to be like a sky. So let's make it kind of a sky blue. And then in front of that, we're going to have some green hills. And let's make that just by dragging another background. And let's make it kind of this nice green. Take the output of this background and merge it over that background here. Let's rename things just so things aren't crazy. Green BG. This will be blue. BG. And I'm going to add a mask to this green background, plug that in, and we'll just kind of do a hilltop thing like this. Let's change this green to be a little nicer, something like that. And we're going to put a house on top of this hill. So I'll move our nodes over and go into my media pool. And I have a cabin. I'll take this cabin and just drag this in here like this. Take the output and merge it over our merge one. Move this up and let's grab a transform node and put that here in between the media and the merge. Let's rename this media in one. We'll call this cabin MI for media in. And on this transform, we're going to resize this cabin and put it where we want. So I don't know, something like that looks nice. There's our little cabin. Now we're going to want some clouds in the sky. So I'm going to take this blue background to the left just because I want to put stuff in between the blue background and the green background because I want stuff to go behind this hill. So it's in between the blue and the hill. And we'll start with a white background. Just make this almost white. Call this white underscore BG, merge that over like this. And we're gonna make a cloud with just a polygon mask. So let's just, I don't know, make a little cloud like this. Happy little cloud. The happy little cloud. Yeah, here we go. Here's a nice cloud. Maybe we'll just put this like here and then we'll add a sun too. This is just like back in the day, like doing some fun pictures in school, right? Kind of the same thing. Let's call this yellow background and we're gonna mask this with an ellipse. And now we have a sunshine. Look at this, this is so easy. You just make a background for the color you want and then put a mask on it. And look at that, we're drawing, it's beautiful. Maybe we want this sun to be a little bit softer so we can take this ellipse and in the inspector, just push up the soft edge a little bit. There's our sunshine, oh baby, it looks great. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll do some more stuff. <laughs> so this has all been pretty basic stuff so far. We're just drawing things, placing things. Let's get, uh, let's get a little bit crazy. First little secret. Let's say we want to make more of these clouds. Well, there's a couple ways that we can do this. And I don't know, this may be two secrets in one. This might be a bonus secret. Okay. Let's move this to the left a little bit. One thing we can do if we want to duplicate something is we can just take a transform node and merge that over later in the line and take this same thing and just run that into the transform. Now I can take this transform and move this and we have a copy of the thing that we just drew and I can size this and position it and everything. And that's a nice quick way to make a duplicate of something. And I use this all the time. Just have the same kind of source, this white background with the mask on it. And then you can run it into 10 different transform nodes and just put those wherever you want. That's really great. Here's another pretty cool trick. I'll just get rid of this real quick. There is a node called duplicate. If you hit shift space bar and type DUP, that'll bring up the duplicate node. And this is really cool. This kind of does all of that all in one little node. By default, there's two copies. And if we just push the center, look at this. We're essentially doing the same thing, just all within one node. We can resize it and do all that kind of stuff. And that's just a quick way to duplicate something without having to make a bunch more nodes. You just run it through the duplicate node. So sweet, right? Another thing that's cool is I could just reset this duplicate node and check this out. This is cool. If I want to duplicate things in a line or if I want to make like more than one copy of something, you know, I'll take the center like this and then I can just boost up the copies. I could have four copies of this if I want to. And I can change their center and everything. And I can kind of offset these in a line. I could change the angle. I can do all kinds of stuff with this. I can change the size and make each one smaller, right? So they kind of go back into the background. Just a super powerful tool. But you can also kind of distribute things randomly. So I'll just reset this again and maybe make like 10 copies, okay? but I'm gonna leave the center and the pivot and everything all the same, and I'm just gonna go over to Jitter. Jitter is like randomness. And so if I push the center over, it's going to add a random offset to these clouds. Let's just say like, I don't know, 0.8 or something. And then for Y, let's do 0.8 also. And now it's just going to kind of scatter clouds wherever it wants. I could change some size jitter like this, and it's going to make them different sizes. I could do angle jitter, kind of change their angles a little bit. Now we probably wouldn't want to do that for clouds, but you could do that. And then you can hit reseed and it will just put clouds randomly wherever you want. And that's a really nice way to just 
quickly add a bunch of something like that. That looks pretty cool. Like there's all these clouds and all I did was just do this duplicate, add a little bit of jitter and hit reseed a few times until I liked it. Such a quick trick to distribute a bunch of stuff all around. And you can do a similar thing with particles and it's pretty much the same idea. This is kind of just a little bit simpler way to do it. And we'll come back to this here in a minute. But yeah, so now we have all of our clouds and that's put in our sky. So cool. Let's say we want to animate this to where the sun goes down and this becomes nighttime. There are a lot of ways to do that, but I was thinking in my mind, <laughs> that's where I usually think. <laughs> I was thinking in my mind that we would have the sky kind of turn like the earth, you know? And so let's try something like that. And this kind of brings us to our next trick. So instead of this sky background being the exact same size as our composition, I think what we're going to do is let's replace this with a clear background. So let's just make a new background here and we'll turn the alpha all the way down. If I hit one on the keyboard, this is just a clear background that's set at 1920 by 1080. Okay. We'll rename this clear BG and I'm going to plug this into the background of this merge four. And so everything we've done so far, other than the clouds and the sky is over a clear background. We're actually going to move the sun too, but we can do that in a minute. All of this we're going to actually put on a different size background. So let's take this blue background and instead of making it 1920 by 1080, we're going to go in over to image and let's take this auto resolution off and let's make this bigger. Let's make it like 3840 by 3840. Okay, just a lot bigger. So it's a big square now, all right? And now we're gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna merge it over that clear background. The reason we're doing it this way, instead of just plugging this into the background is because the very background of our composition, that sets the frame size. So 1920 by 1080. And so taking this and merging over this clear background is gonna put our sky back in, but it's not gonna change the resolution. If we were to just plug this into the background instead of our clear like this, look what happens. Oh, it goes crazy. Easy. It's lost its dang mind. So we don't really want to do that. Things get all confusing when you do that. So it's just easier just to connect this clear background as the background to kind of set our canvas size. I guess at this point, we don't really need to make this clear. We could make it whatever color we want because we're going to cover it up with our sky. So it doesn't really matter. The reason I made this clear though is because we can turn this alpha down like this. And then we could take all of this, you know, and merge it over stuff later if we want to. But we're going to kind of run into the same problem actually. But that's kind of a quick tip is just how to make a clear background, which you will need from time to time. Anyways, it doesn't really matter if this is clear. We'll leave it clear. It won't hurt anything. So now we have kind of like what we already had, but check this out. I can take this big square. Remember, this is what it looks like. And I can use a transform node. I'll just put this transform node in between our square composition and this merge. And if I rotate this with the angle, what happens? I can rotate it and it's going to rotate those clouds. What it's really doing is rotating this huge square and everything in it. Now, this is a little secret that's just easy to not appreciate. <laughs> but what we're really doing here is we're grouping everything together for our sky and we're transforming it all at once. So if you have any experience with After Effects, this is sort of like parenting things. Anything that you run through a transform is going to be transformed together, just like you were to parent it to a null object or put it together as a pre-comp or something like that. You can move everything at once with a transform that is later in the flow. So let's actually take our white background and let's resize this one too. Instead of auto resolution, let's do 3840 by 3840. That's going to mess with our sizing of our mask, but that's okay. We can either leave it like that, which I think it looks okay, or we can select this mask and we could just make a quick adjustment using the shape box. I'm just clicking right here, or you can hit shift B to have this kind of transform box around your mask, and then you can scale it and that kind of thing. That's a nice quick way to fix that. I could also redraw it. It would be probably better to draw this just with the right size to begin with, but you know what? We're iterating and that's okay. I also might not like the sizing and position and everything of these. So let's just, I can hold S and drag to scale these down. Let's just make those a little bit smaller. Now I can take this duplicate and maybe we'll add a few more. Let's make like 30 and we'll reseed this a few times until we get some good clouds in the background. Just kind of bring these all together again. There we go. There's some clouds and that looks nice. So now we've sort of redone our background here, but the point of that is to have this transform to where we can rotate this and on this side, it's going to be daytime. And then if we flip this 180, it's going to be nighttime. So to mess with this a little bit, let's actually just take this down a touch, move our clouds around a bit. Okay. And now with our transform, our axis is kind of down here. So it's rotating from this axis being down. And so we get a little bit more movement from side to side here when we rotate this. So now if I want this to start in the daytime, I can just keyframe this angle on this transform. We'll just call this a uh, day, night, 
xf for transform. We'll keyframe this angle. We'll start at zero and then here at frame 60 or so, we'll switch this to 180. So now we're rotating this over time. And I think let's take our yellow sun and I'll just hold shift and drag this out and we'll merge this over like that. And let's just go ahead and reset our size for our sun mask to add our ellipse like this, drag it in and there's our sun. I think I like it actually not soft like that. I think that's kind of nice. And because we're running this through the transform, it already moves with the sky like this. If you're enjoying all these little tidbits, make sure you don't miss the Fusion Survival Guide. It's a free video course that goes over my essential tips for working in Fusion that will make your life so much easier. If you're into making motion graphics or visual effects, there's a link to sign up right there. There's also a link in the description. Totally free, my gift to you. Let's keep going. One thing I'll do to make things run a little bit quicker is for this polygon here, this cloud shape, I'm going to right click here where it says right click for shape animation and just remove polygon to polyline. And what that's going to do is just get rid of the animation for our mask, which is going to let Resolve kind of think about this a little bit easier. When you're animating a mask, it has to think about it each frame. And so if you remove any animation that you don't need, things will run way faster. <laughs> okay. So this flips all the way around and now let's design a nighttime part here. And we can do that a lot of different ways, but I think what we'll do is we'll just have this one part be day. I'll hit shift space bar and type UND for underlay, double click off of it, hold down alt and select underlay and hit F2 to rename. We'll call this a day and we'll make it like a yellow for sunshiny, right? Let's move it over here. And then let's get a new color, like a dark night sky kind of color. Let's do sort of like a dark purplish, dark bluish thing. We'll make sure this background is 3840 by 3840 and we'll merge that over. Okay. I'll hit one on the keyboard just so we can see this composition by itself. Let's take a mask and we'll just mask this background with a rectangle mask. So it's just on the bottom here. We'll make it a little bit wider and soften the edge. So we have a nice kind of fade there. Oh, that looks so good. And now as this turns, look at that. It turns from day to night. Oh, it's so cool. So running everything through this transform just makes everything easy. And I can switch this over. Here's what's cool is I can go all the way to 60 like this, and then I can kind of place stuff here in this composition and I'll place it at the right place here. So lots of places. Let's do a trick with some stars. If we hit shift space bar and type star, we can make a shape that's a star. Let's take this, make this five points like that. And the only thing with shapes is that you can't composite just a shape over stuff. You have to have a shape render. So I can hit shift space bar, type S render, and that just converts it into to a 2D image instead of just kind of a pretend math shape. <laughs> so that'll make a star for us. And we can merge this over and we'll use a transform node to position this. We can move this around and position it right here in our right viewer, which is actually going to be, if we bring this up in the left viewer, the opposite of where we're moving it, but it's putting it in the right place on our composition, which is kind of crazy. So there's a little secret right there. You can position stuff that's transformed by looking at a node that's down the flow. Like we're looking at media out here and you can position it and see the effect of it and it'll put it where it's supposed to be here earlier in the comp, which is just, I don't know, it's like some inception junk. I don't even know how to deal with that. But let's just put this star somewhere over here. Yay. We could also do the same duplicate thing that we were doing earlier. This S render, let's make this S render here. This is making 1920 by 1082. Let's make this 3840 by 3840. That's the cause and fix for a lot of problems in Fusion is this image sizing stuff. But now with our duplicate node here, let's take this transform off. Let's actually just size this with a S transform. We'll just take the size down a lot, make it much smaller. So like 0.05, 0 0.05. And we have this little tiny star in the middle. Okay. We'll use duplicate and do like, I don't know, 20 stars. And let's have our jitter be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And that's going to scatter some stars all over this thing. We reseed this a few times. We should be able to see some of those stars. Change the size. Let's actually change this jitter to be a little bit smaller. Let's do like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, just so the stars are kind of clumped together a little bit. We can move this star around to be right about where it needs to be. We can just change the jitter on the X axis to kind of put those stars out and just kind of play with these until you get a bunch of stars in the background, or you can place them yourself, whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's kind of nice. You have some stars. And again, all of those are going to move with our rotation. <laughs> so cool. Now, I don't want to see any stars here in the sky, which I happen to not see, which is actually convenient. But something we might want to do is just use a rectangle mask and plug that into
into the mask input of our merge and just limit it here to the bottom half of this kind of day to night background. That'll fix any problems like that. And one thing we got to do is have a moon. So let's grab from the media pool. I just have a PNG. This is just a cartoon moon and we'll merge that over, take a transform and we'll size this and position it where it's supposed to be in the sky. Oh, beautiful. There's our moon. Look at this. Day to night. Oh baby. That looks so good. Oh, and it's really just a matter of placing stuff here on this background and then rotating the background. Okay. Really cool. So we have our moon and our stars. We have our sun and our clouds, but this animation is maybe not the most interesting. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Here's our next secret. If we go up to the spline panel and we select our day to night transform, by the way, under these three dots, I like to make sure I have show only selected tool selected here so that things aren't overwhelming. Sometimes there can be a lot of animated stuff. I just usually have show selected tool on and I'll click angle. And this is going to show us a graph of our animation starting at zero at zero frames and then at 60 frames going to 180. So let's pick this first keyframe and I'm going to hold shift and drag it over to about 20 frames or so. So it's going to wait about 20 frames and then it's going to flip to nighttime. Okay. Now we don't want this to start at full speed and then go full speed until it stops immediately on frame 60. We want it to kind of start slow and then speed up in the middle and then slow down before it stops. So one thing we can do is select both of these keyframes and hit F on the keyboard. It's going to flatten out this graph. So it kind of starts out slow and then it speeds up and then it slows down before it stops. That's going to give us a much better animation. Looks really cool. We can even take these handles and I can hold alt and drag them to the left and make this S curve a little bit more intense. And so we're spending a lot more time kind of ramping up and then it goes quickly and then it slows down. Oh, that looks so nice. Whoosh. Yes. Other thing that I like to do, and this is kind of where the secret comes in, is we zoom in here, you can grab this part of the curve that's just a little bit down the hill, grab this and just bring this up a touch and then hit F. Same thing down here, grab this and bring this down a touch and hit F. And now look what happens. It has a little bit of anticipation when it animates. So it starts out and it moves one way and kind of gets ready and then it whooshes the other way, then it overshoots it a little bit and then it brings it back. And that just gives a lot more character to the animation, that overshoot. Whoosh, yes, that's really cool. So let's refine this a little bit. I'll just take this out like this, hold down alt and kind of change these handles a little bit, make them a little bit more smooth. Yeah, very nice. Looks like somebody's taking it like with their hands and just kind of cranking it over, which is just a cool stylistic way to do it. So this is looking pretty cool. But one issue is during the day, everything looks nice. But then at nighttime, this looks too bright. It looks like it's still being lit in the daytime. So let's adjust this to kind of match that lighting. So one thing, this green background, this hill, let's animate this color. We'll start right as it's kind of starting to turn. And here where it says color, I'll just click on this keyframe diamond like this. And let's go over to where it's mostly dark, frame 46 or so. And now I'm just going to change this a little bit to look like a nighttime hill. That looks better. So now we kind of fade from bright green into dark green. So that looks great. It's way better. All right. Now this cabin needs a similar treatment. So let's just isolate the cabin by hitting one on the keyboard. Take a look at this here. And I'm just going to run this through a color corrector. Let's grab this color corrector and just drag this in between the cabin and the transform. And I'm going to do a color correction on this to make it look good at night. So I'm not going to worry about what it should look like in the day. I'm just going to pretend like this is the nighttime cabin. And one thing I'll do is go over to options and make sure I have pre divide post multiply checked. This is very important or you'll get some weird stuff happening, but we can go to correction and let's make this a little bit blue. Let's maybe take the gain down, take the saturation down a little bit just so it looks like it's nighttime. I think something like that might look pretty good somewhere in there, maybe even a little more blue. Okay. So now we have our nighttime cabin, but in the daytime, it looks weird now. <laughs> So how do we animate this color on and off? Well, here's another secret. You can animate the strength of any node by going over to settings and animating this blend slider. So this is kind of the strength of whatever that node is doing. And this is available in most nodes. And so let's just animate this blend slider for the color correction. And let's start right about here, turn this to zero, and we'll go all the way here to where it's supposed to be pretty much dark. We'll turn up to one. Now we have this just fading out. Oh, and it looks so good. Look at that. It's like not even a problem. Whoosh. So so good, man, that looks great. I'll go to my keyframes and we'll flatten out those tangents for the blend for that color correction. And now whoosh, looks good. But now, I mean, it looks okay, but we want some life here. We want these windows to pop on. 
So how do we do that? Well, we could go in and draw some lights for each of these windows and kind of put some yellow on top of it. But here's another little secret. You can take an image and run it through a color corrector like this. So I'll just run this through a second color corrector like this, hit one on the keyboard, and we can see what is happening when I color correct this, okay? If you take this hue and you rotate the hue, you can kind of change all of the colors of something in a very pleasing way. And so if we want these to be bright yellow windows, I can just kind of play with this until the windows look bright yellow. I can change this hue around until we get kind of a nice yellowish look on our windows, maybe something around those lines. But now the rest of the cabin looks crazy sauce, but we're gonna fix that here in a minute. First of all, let's take this color corrected kind of purpley cabin and merge it over our original cabin that has the color correction adjustment. Okay, so let's just call this a day night CC for color corrector. And this one's gonna be called windows CC. Let's grab a merge. We'll put the day night in the background and the windows in the foreground like this. And we'll take that and plug that into the transform. So now we're just putting the color corrected strange looking cabin over everything. We can limit where that is by adding a mask to this merge. So I can add a mask here to the merge. And here on the left, masking on the cabin itself, the 1024 by 1024, not my big composition, but this one right here, I can put in a mask to just limit those windows to show up right there in the windows. And if I want to add multiple masks, here's the secret. You can take another polygon and just plug it into that polygon mask like this, and we can just keep adding them. By default, all it does is just stack those masks. And it makes one big mask. So now we can have all those masks together. And look what we're doing. We're turning on lights in our cabin. Oh, it's so freaking wholesome. Look at that. Oh, so good. Let's take this windows color correction and just boost the gain up a touch just to have those windows glowing a little bit. That looks a lot nicer. Beautiful. Let's get a little bit more organized here. Let's have the cabin. Cabin's going through the color correction. We're also doing the windows color correction here. And we have our masks helping that out. Okay, let's just stack those. So now we can take this merge. And if we adjust the blend of this merge, that's going to turn those lights on or off. So check this out. If I take the blend. Look at that. It's going to turn them off or on. See, it could be like a crackling fire in there. Maybe so. <laughs> but I think what we'll do is after this turns nighttime, Time. let's just have this off for a little bit and then we'll just fade this up over a couple frames like this to turn on the lights let's see how this looks swoosh click oh, <laughs> it's just so good making this stuff is so fun so easy to make it look nice but I think we're gonna call this beautiful right here. Oh, what else would you add to this composition? Maybe some smoke coming out of the chimney, maybe some fog, maybe a little bit more interactive lighting, maybe some shadows moving around. What would you add? Let me know in the comments. Oh, this is so much fun. Hey, if you don't know me, my name is Casey and I teach fusion. So if you're into learning about how fusion works and making visual effects and motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve, this is the best place to be. And again, make sure that you don't miss our free video course, the Fusion Survival Guide that teaches you so many good essential things for working in fusion to make your life so much easier and also check out this video for more goodness on youtube okay hey thanks for hanging with me this has been this has been so wholesome hey this is you me and a cup of tea it's not tea it's coffee same principle